Hi everyone and good morning and welcome to today's morning report on Wednesday the 2nd of December with me which is Perry Market Analyst at Hentech Markets. European trading sessions got off to a fairly sort of positive-ish start, um, just slightly po uh, the positive side of neutral really. Um, and that's been sort of guided by um, a fairly sort of solid session in Asia overnight but um, majority of the drive has been on the fact that uh, US markets close quite strongly higher say 1.1% up on the S&P 500 and that was despite the fact that we saw the ISM manufacturing data coming in the lowest since uh, 2009 let me just show you how that worked 48.6 well below expectations below back below 50 and um, that was uh, Pretty disappointing number. Now, the implications of this, um, I don't think it changes the Fed rate hike expectations, but it could well have an impact on how the Fed chooses to, um, or how quickly the choose, Fed chooses to hike rates. So I think that's pretty much why the markets were positive on the back of that, because I think that that, that shallows out the... Um, the uh, the speed of the um, of the rate hikes and therefore that is fairly market supportive. Now the dollar remains pretty strong, um, and uh, actually if you look at the um, U.S. trade weighted dollar, it still remains up at uh, strong levels. Um, that one hundred point four is sort of the level it reached in March. But looking at the uh, the yields on the treasuries now, the two year first of all actually um, has recovered much of the losses that it saw yesterday. Now, that is interesting because that the, the two year is the sort of uh, market's perception of um, of the rate uh, in, of short term interest rates. And the 10 year yield is the sort of perception of long term growth expectations as well. So falling uh, that disappointing manufacturing PMI data meant that the um, sorry, the ISM data meant that uh, the uh, US 10 year Treasury yield fell quite sharply. And um, the uh, the move would suggest, as I said, that sort of um, as in uh, sort of suggests that the uh, the Fed will be a lot slower, I think, in uh, hiking interest rates, and hence why the market has been supported by that. So, very much Im um, strong implications off the back of that uh, data yesterday. So, what have we got to look forward to today? Well, we are in for. If I can find it. First of all, we're in for Eurozone CPI. The flash CPI data for the Eurozone is expected to come out at 10 o'clock and expected to show a, a plus 0.2%. Now, last month uh, got revised higher to plus 0.1, so this is the flash data, uh, which was subsequently revised to plus 0.1. It's expected to come in at plus 0.2, so continuing to improve on the, um, on the inflation data. That's interesting coming in front of what is expected to be an extension of QE measures for the... Um, for the market, so does this mean? Does this give us um, to give the ECB sort of more room, more wriggle room for less easing measures? Maybe it does. Maybe that means the market will be disappointed tomorrow. Interesting. Um, then into the afternoon, we've got the ADP employment number. Now, ADP employment didn't really do a great deal last. Uh, didn't do a great um, forecasting measure for the uh, non-farm payrolls last month. Payrolls were strongly above 200,000, um, 270 odd thousand, uh, and uh, the ADP was at 182, so it didn't do a great deal um, for the forecasting. But 190 is the expectation there today, and it would sort of suggest that perhaps we're going to get a solid payrolls report on Friday. Then also we've got the um, weekly oil stocks at uh, 3.30 this afternoon, uh, expected to come in at 0 0.5 negative, so that would be... Um, the first time in almost t what ten weeks that we've seen that uh, those oil inventories come in at a negative level, so that would be interesting. That could be supportive for oil prices. So that takes me to my chart of the day, which is the Kiwi dollar, and we've had this Kiwi dollar breaking above 66.15 yesterday. That is a key near-term pivot, uh, provided support and then provided resistance and a bursting through that yesterday that sort of now turns it back into more positive sort of outlook uh, in the near to medium term now you've seen you're, you're trading above all the short term av moving averages which is positive you've also got the move momentum indicators which are nicely um, r improving on the stochastics and also the RSI so pr pretty much uh, positivity throughout that um, the only th uh, caveat that I would have is the uh, falling 144-day moving average, which has been sort of acted as a basis of resistance um, in October. 
and that could well be seen again. I would say at the moment, uh, on the balance, I'd be looking to buy in, into uh, any weakness on this uh, on this Kiwi now, and uh, looking on the intraday chart. Uh, looking at the intraday chart, I'd say that uh, anything back towards so you got the the support band of that pivot, which comes in at 66.15. Anything back towards there, up towards this sort of 66.40 level, which was the, the sort of band of consolidation yesterday afternoon, I'd say that would be a chance to buy on the Kiwi um, because it looks as though I think it's going to be going higher and possibly even testing this reaction high of uh, 67.90 and um, so there is upside I think in this Kiwi move, I think this um, breakout is a, is a positive move near term and uh, I think it, for the next couple of days I'd be using any weakness as a chance to buy the Kiwi because all these momentum indicators do look positive but obviously payroll support on Friday could have a big impact on this chart but in front of that payroll support I think it looks fairly positive so I wish you good luck in your trading on, on um, Kiwi dollar today and I will speak to you later.